Portrait Artist of the Year, Season 8, Episode 1. This would be year 2021. So let's get started. And please, if you would, consider leaving me a thumbs up and subscribe so that I can keep doing these recaps because they're so much fun. So by now we kind of know how this program works. First we get to see the portraits that each artist submitted in order to get on the program. This is very unusual in terms of the proportion of his head compared to his arms. This one looks lovely as well. Little kitty in the corner. Yeah, really nice. Love the value range there. This one, oh, I find this very intriguing. There's something about this. Oh gosh, uh, reminds me of an artist that I'm a big fan of here in the States. Um, with that certain amount of color blocking going in. Yeah, I'm going to keep my eye on that one. This one, this one just is a little odd to me because I know, I know it's a um, COVID mask underneath her chin, but, but it keeps reading as a beard to me, but that, I'll get over that. This one is a little hard to see, but, um, but gosh, we have some landscape in here. Yeah, I got to get to landscape artists of the year too, pretty soon. This one is very small and I believe is a print. I can't tell for sure. Here's the next one. Lovely, very cold, very cool tones being used there. Uh, boy, she's really young. She's got the goods. Wow, okay. Oh boy, that's a, that's a large piece to work on. Nice. Translates really well out in the open like that. And the last one. Yeah, quite a bit of character in these faces. So uh, this is going to be a, a good episode. We have some, some really strong contenders here. So let's see what happens first. Our first model up is Gabrielle, and she is a singer. Now what's unusual about her, I'm not familiar with her, but it must be her thing to have her hair uh, three quarters of the way over her face, which is a little weird to me when you're going to have your portrait painted, but that's, that's who she is. Uh, the back of her head is is basically shaved, so so it's a style choice. But I would I would not have liked to draw the short straw and be on the side that didn't give me the kind of information I need. So I think that's that that plays into the factors here. Uh, four hours in, the artists turn their easels around, and Gabrielle is going to look at one of these, and she is going to pick one to take home. That has nothing to do with the final judging, but it is an honor to be chosen. And so one of these artists will soon receive that honor. So let's look at the first one up. The first one up, I think, had the best view because that was the most information you could get about her, her head and her face and, and the whole structure of, uh, of her, you know, the way she presents herself. So um, that was an advantage to be in, this, in the position he was in. Really beautiful, beautifully done. Not a lot of detail, which you know I love. There's lost and found edges. There's warm and cool spots. There's busy and quiet spots. Yeah, this one, he's sold. I'm sold. Yeah, beautiful, beautiful job and really well designed as well. Yeah, with those sh shapes in the back that sort of uh, mirror the shapes going on in the hair. That's, that's a very clever piece of work, as well as nice color mixing. Yeah. Really, really nice. When we pull back, that reads well from far away, which is important because the final commission, the 10,000 pound commission is going to be in a gallery, not in a home setting. So it needs to have a certain amount of impact, which we know sometimes has not been the case. Um, here's the next one. This is a drawing, but I think it's drawn with some kind of markers. There's so many different kinds of new materials out. I'm not familiar with all of them, but you can see the challenge there with only getting part of the face. And, um, you know, I just sort of have to honor that line work, I guess. The lines that, you know, when you put them really close together, you're going to get more of a deeper value. Boy, the patience involved in building all that up would, would be really, really wearing on me. But this person can certainly draw exquisitely. It's really beautifully done. Um, it, it, for me, it doesn't have the same impact that a painting does. But I don't think that matters to the judges. We know from their the finalist last year that they picked um, someone who drew, uh, drew forms in, in this kind of manner and in a more monochromatic way. So I have no idea what they're going to lean towards. This one does have the island surrounded by oceans issue for me. You know, the head is an island and it's surrounded by ocean, which is the white of the paper. And I just would have liked a line or two to anchor the head in. I don't like disembodied heads. I just, it's a pet peeve that I have, um, but, and, and 
anyway, here's we're on to the next one. The next one, here's a detail from the next one. Now, this is a much more traditionally kind of painting, painted painting, painted painting, yeah, than uh, the first two have been. But it is a really good example of a combination be between a drawing and a painting, because this person is really drawing with the paintbrush. Love those hits of blue in the hair. I think that's so important. You know, black has so much blue in it. If you've ever painted a black Labrador Retriever, boy, are you going to have to pick up a lot of blue paint in order to do it. There's a lot of blue in black. So that that's that's a nice color choice, and it's a it's it's there's also a brightness to it. That bright blue was a smart choice. Could could have been a very very dull painting if they hadn't added some. Oh, there's some violets in there and some blues too. This person did the whole figure, so uh, and this was a larger piece, so I think that was probably more of a challenge. Um, and was directly in front of the model. It's always so hard to do something when you're directly in front of somebody. I like to get three-quarter view if I can, when possible. Well, Gabrielle is going to pick one, and let's see which one she picks to take home. And it is going to be, let's see. Oh, yeah, yeah, I would have liked that one. I would like that one in my home anyway. It's, it's just a beautiful painting. Yeah, really, really complete. All right, now we will go on to the next model. Our next model is Grace Neutral, and she is a television presenter and model. And she has some tattoos, and I find that kind of interesting because uh, that would have to be considered here. But not overly considered. You know, you got to make it look like it's part of the skin, not not something that's drawn on top of it. Although that's what a tattoo is. I need to think about my analysis on that a little bit. My, there might be some flaws there. Anyway, four hours in, they turn their easels around, and we get to see what they've done. And she's going to pick one of these to take home. So let's see. I think this is a strong group coming up. Yeah, that's really nice. That's beautifully done. Now, this has a lot of black in it, and I'm not a fan of black. I, I don't have any black on my palette. I, per, I prefer to mix my own neutral black when, whenever possible. But this person handled really what, what that black and white contrast really, really well without overdoing the titanium white. So that's, that's nicely done, really nicely done. Um, yeah, this is a strong contender. When we come in closer, yeah, really, really nice. Um, it certainly resembles her and has a simplicity. Yeah, uh, I'm, I'm a big fan of this painting. Let's see when we pull all the way back what happens. Oh, it's not as resolved as I thought it was, but that's okay. I don't, I don't have a problem with that. They're going to judge her on what she does today, not on what she didn't do. And, and they're, uh, you know, in the back of their heads, they have to also consider the self-portraits as well. And um, everybody had a strong self-portrait. Well, I would say maybe this person coming up maybe didn't have the strongest self-portrait. It was that small print, which was a little bit out of focus. But, but this just doesn't um, this doesn't read very strongly for me. You know, it's a very flat image, and um, has texture, not much value range. Oh boy, I find those two eyes, one being dark and one being light, a little bit disturbing. But that, that's only true if it was on my easel. You know, if it, if it was on my easel, I would need to, to, um, to, to do something about that. But it's his easel, and so he's seeing, you know, everybody sees the world differently. He's seeing it differently, and he, he certainly scaled up, so he's working large as compared to what his self-portrait was. So good for him. And now we go on to the last one. Now, the last one... Oh boy, the last one, I, I really I really like this last one. I don't think it has as much a resemblance to the model as the first one did, but uh, but I love simplicity of forms. I love a flat brush. The You know, when I talk about flat brush, what I mean is when you're chiseling the shapes because your brush is flat. And uh, that's just a style that I prefer. So it's a good thing I'm not a judge because you know I would pick the style I, li I like and prefer every single time. And that's that wouldn't be good television. But this is this is a really nice piece. When I first saw this, I thought, oh, it's really clean. And I thought, well, how am I going to describe what that means? And I think what it means for me is that it's just really good color mixing. And although there's blending going on, it's not overly blended. It just looks tremendously clean to me. 
And that's important because to me, it means that it wasn't labored over. It means that decisions were made about what color, what value, what shape to apply, and then the person executed it. There was no, no hesitation and no confusion. And I think this is a much more resolved painting than maybe the first one was. But let's see which one she picks to take home. And you know, two of them I would be very happy to have in my home, but, uh, but let's see what she picks. Oh, she picks that one. Well, good. Yay. Yeah, I'd be happy with that painting too. All right, now we will go on to the third model. The third model is Jacob Fortune Lloyd, and he is an actor. And I'm not surprised to find out he's an actor because these television presenters and actors tend to be extremely attractive human beings compared to us normal citizen people. <laughs> Look at how symmetrical that face is. You know, the eyes completely line up. Oh my gosh, you, you couldn't ask for a more symmetrical face. Um, so, you know, he's just got the high cheekbones and all that. He's a, he's a classic beauty. So now we'll go on to uh, where the artists turn their easels around and we get to see what, what they've done for the last four hours. And remember, it's four hours, but it's two hours of painting and then a break for lunch. Although they can paint during lunch, there's no model there. And then two hours afterwards. Now, this one's a little weird because it looks as if she painted it with using a concave mirror. You know, there's just a distortion there which is okay, but, um, uh, you know, I just, it, for me, I just don't understand the choice of doing that, but uh, we'll see whether or not that pays off in the end. It's certainly a different way of presenting your, uh, your model. So, but the, the color mixing is really good, and, and yeah, look at that up close. Yeah, that's really nicely done. Whew, yeah, really like that, although I, can't help wanting to pick up some cerulean blue and throwing it in that eye, eyelid. Oh, gee, that's me and my cerulean blue. I could talk for an hour about cerulean blue. I always am seeing color spots of value, and I see them as being cerulean blue a lot of the time. But this is, this is a beautiful piece. Almost looks like you're looking through the lens of a glass, your glasses there. I wonder why she made that stylistic choice to, in terms of composition. Um, but I don't know, and I don't know that we'll see more of her or not. We're, we will find out soon. This is a much more traditional kind of approach to portraiture, and I think this is what people are looking for more. You know, if you hire someone to do your portrait, you want it to look like you. You, you just do. Otherwise, I'm not sure why you would want to commission someone to do a portrait, and this person definitely has the goods and can do the job. That's beautifully done. So uh, that's, to me, that's, that's one of the strongest pieces so far today. Here we are up close. And I like this, you know, I, I don't want there to be a lot of detail in things. I want it to read from far away. I think that's one of the things that painting can do so well, that it can look like blobs when you're close to it. And then when you walk away, the optical illusion and the magic happens. Here's another close up of the face. Really nicely done there. Yeah, they've, this person's used blues in with their oranges, which is, a really smart thing to do. You losing using those complementary colors is always going to give you more bang for your buck. You know, it's going to make the colors that you mix stronger because of the context. You know, when they're next to each other like that. That that orange shirt with that subdued blue behind is much brighter than it would appear if there was a uh, just a neutral white behind. It's 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 amazing what color relationships will do. Here's another one which is very different, much more stylistic in terms of its interpretation. Um, it certainly looks like him. This is just something that I'm, uh, it's more like exaggerating the features of the face. I'm not sure. This one is just, uh, I, I just don't find this one as, as uh, pleasing for my eye as that middle one was. I just found that, that one to be particularly exciting. Yeah, here we are close up. Yeah, beautifully done. Not a colorist, though. You're not going to find anything um, that, you know, there are no color value swap outs going on here. This person is matching what they see uh, to their, their paint palette, which is a legitimate thing to do. It's just not as exciting to me. From far away, it certainly looks like him and would look good on a gallery wall. So we've got some strong contenders here. So let's see which one Jacob picks to go home. And he picks the convoluted one. So be it. All right, now the final judging begins. Now in the final judging, only three of these artists are going to go 
on to the semifinals of this episode. So let's see who they pick. So they're all lined up. It's an exhausting day. And, you know, the process to get here would be exhausting. Remember, you can't tell anybody that you're doing this, so it's all done in secrecy, too. It must be a very strange, surreal time. You only have a month between when you apply and when you're accepted onto the program. All right, so the first one that's chosen is this one, which is that sort of just strange concave look. So be it. And this one, I, th I thought this was a very strong piece. I still think it's a really strong piece. I'm... I don't know what the third one's going to be. I'm hoping... Oh, good. Yeah, that was the one I was hoping it would, would be. And hashtag Joe is always wrong. I thought that this person would win the episode, but you already know from my giveaway right there that he's not going to. But that's a person I would have picked. But I'm not a judge, and that's as it should be. Art is completely subjective. Anybody, you know, it's anybody's call. They're all, they're all great. So now we get to see the self-portrait next to what the work that they did today. This is really interesting to me because I'm not sure that I would have known that the same artist did both paintings. They're so different in terms of their color choices. So that's a surprise to me. Stylistically, that I can see as being very, very, um, very much the same. So, you know, I'm looking for consistency of style. You know, that's why someone wants to buy a painting or, or is interested in your portfolio as an artist is because you have a long you know, they'll, they'll know your style, like, within one instant. Oh, you know, that's an Andrew Wyeth. Oh, that's a Van Gogh. Well, those are extremes, of course. But, you know, I can look on, on the Internet and, you know, look to see who my friends are. And I know within a second who's painted it because they because they're, it's not just that piece, but, you know, they have their lifetime career of work behind them. And you just know stylistically whose it is. So this is who I'm rooting for today. But, uh, but I already told you, in a way, he's not going to win. Darn. Oh, well, moving on. <laughs> Here's our third one. <laughs> yeah, this is a really strong piece, too. Yeah, yeah they, she, this person stepped up the palette as well. Maybe, maybe, she, maybe she did that painting of her self-portrait during the time of COVID, and I think it certainly portrays, I think, how we all felt during that period of COVID. It was just, oh, gosh, so isolating and weird and dystopian, wasn't it? You, you, you kind of even don't want to go back there and remember but uh, that certainly captures that time. So now the um, judges will pick one to go on, and the winner will go on to episode nine. Episode nine is where all eight of our participants show up, and they paint against each other, and then only three are chosen, and one goes on to the semi, uh, three go on to the semifinals, and then only one is chosen for the final commission. So this is our winner for today. Oh, I forgot to say, da 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 da. Here's our winner for today. <laughs> My timing was a little off, sorry. So remember to keep the whites, your paper white, your paints wet, mask for value, mix for color, and I'll see you next time. Okay, bye-bye.